Hello and welcome again to another video with Gardening for Beginners. Today we're going to talk about growing peppers from start to finish. Uh, you may be wondering about the PEPP1301 stuff in the title. I'm using that because I'm going to treat these growing guides like you would a college course. So for example, if I were to have a cucumber growing video, um, they would start out with CU, CU, 1301, Cuckoo 1301. Uh, I'm using this format for a couple different reasons. First off, peppers take a long time to germinate, grow, and many varieties take months to bear fruit. So instead of having you wait almost an entire year for a complete video, I'm doing them in steps so that you can see the process unfold. Second, it'll also be easier to find the next episodes. So you watch one episode, the way to search for the next episode, uh, it's like let's say you watch this one uh, PEPP 1301 you would just need to look for the same letters with 1302 and so on and of course I'll link and embed these videos in future videos uh, where I can lastly you'll be able to follow along with me if you're in a similar planting zone as me which is zone 9a uh, but peppers are without a doubt one of my favorite plants to grow and harvest there are endless varieties of varying heats and flavors not only that but they really thrive in the heat of this South Texas weather. So let's begin and get our pepper journey started. To germinate the peppers, I'm going to use what's commonly referred to as the paper towel method. All you're going to need are some paper towels, a spray bottle filled with either 100% water or 90% water and 10% hydrogen peroxide, and something like a Ziploc baggie to keep the seeds and paper towels in that will help hold humidity and moisture. You're also going to want some seeds, obviously. In my grow room right now, and I've been keeping an eye on the temperature here for the last two weeks or so, it hovers between 77 and 82 degrees. Right now we're looking at 81 degrees. If you're wondering uh, what that number is on top, that's actually the uh, temperature inside my greenhouse right now. It's a pretty neat, pretty neat thing to have. I like uh, it's it's nice and handy to monitor things that are, you know, temperatures that are going on outside in the greenhouse. I feel pretty good about not using a heat mat because of this temperature spread. Peppers prefer of an, an environment of at least 75 degrees to germinate. Having a lower temperature doesn't mean they won't germinate, but expect to wait in upwards of three weeks for them to germinate and your success rate may actually be lower. Compare that to a week or two in a warmer environment like this one and you can see why a lot of people use heat mats, but I think I'm going to be okay. It's pretty warm in here and I'm going to rest them above my grow lights which put off a little heat themselves. I've heard of people putting them near the warm part of a fridge so this is kind of a similar concept. Okay I'm going to make some room over here so that we can get things cooking. So you've got your paper towel and what you may need to do depending upon the size of it is you may need to cut or tear it so it'll fit in the baggie when you fold it, I don't know, two or three times. And let me get some seeds real quick. These are tiny seeds. I've never grown Thai hot chilies before never even seen their seeds but look at those little cuties right there so what you want to do is you want to spread your seeds out on one side of the paper towel to where they're about an inch or two apart and I've chosen five so I'm just kind of gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set them almost like uh, dice <laughs> There we go. That's that's more than more than enough space in between them right there. <clears throat> 
and four or five is probably the number you should use anyway because not all of them are going to germinate. Don't worry about this if you plan on saving the seeds from the peppers you grow. On a side note, if you do decide to save uh, pepper seeds from the plants you grow and you're growing more than one type of pepper, make sure your different pepper plants are, are at least 400 feet apart from each other so that they don't cross pollinate. But uh, cross pollination is a topic for another video, just keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, don't worry about using so many pepper seeds if you plan on saving uh, seeds from the peppers you grow. Chances are you're going to have a lot of seeds when you have a successful pepper harvest. So um, we have our pepper seeds lined up and spaced apart. Um, now I'm just going to hit it with a little bit of liquid just to keep them on there. Otherwise they're going to kind of, well, you can already see they're moving around a little bit. Yeah, let me get this guy back up here and just, just lightly saturate them. That'll just hold them in place better. <clears throat> Now what you want to do, um, just fold it a few more times and um, after you've folded it a couple times, you'll want to hit it again with this water hydrogen peroxide mixture. Now the reason, I forgot to mention this earlier, the reason that I use hydrogen, uh, a little bit of hydrogen peroxide in there is that it's going to um, help uh, lower the chances of any sort of mold. Um, also you can get like a mildew smell uh, in there, um, which I'm trying to avoid. Um, you just want to keep in mind this is a very damp and humid environment that we're created, which is a perfect vehicle for mold and mildew. Um, and the peroxide should prevent that problem before it even starts. So now that you've got the paper towel damp, you just put it in the baggie and stash it in a warm place. There we go. I've got them in there. Maybe a couple more spritzes for good measure. Seal it up. Get the majority of the air out of there. And then it's ready to go. Now we wait. Just kidding. I'm not going to make you wait. Um, one other thing to keep in mind though before we go any further, you want to make sure you label these. I like to use a Sharpie on the outside of the Ziploc bag. Um, what I do is I put the name of the variety of pepper and then also the date. That helps me keep track on how the different varieties, how quickly they will grow when you're using, or I'm sorry, how quickly they will germinate and sprout when you're using the uh, paper towel method. Now I also wanted to mention that you should check your seeds for germination twice a day. I check mine before I go to work in the morning and again when I get home. The reason I do that is because when these guys start to germinate, they go fast. So I'll take a quick peek at them in the morning, in the evening, um, because there, there have been periods of time where I've done this method before and I actually wait uh, maybe a full day, day and a half to check on them and the roots are just getting out of control and they'll actually burrow a little bit into the paper towel Towel. and there's nothing wrong with that it's just a little more frustrating uh, getting them out of the paper towel um, at that point because they're clinging to it okay so we have some seeds here that have started germinating and as you can see this is a great example of what I was talking about earlier one of these germinated oh gosh probably about a day ago 24 hours ago 36 hours ago and as you can see the root has bore into the napkin. Again, that's not going to be an issue, but it's just eh, it's just a mild irritation. This guy probably started sprouting just a few hours ago, and he's he's still pretty mobile, okay? So, now that these have started to germinate, it's safe to move them over to some type of container with seed starter mix in it. I have a styrofoam cup here with seed starter mix in it. Um, it also has rainwater and a little neem oil worked into the soil. Um, the neem oil is going to kill fungus and ant eggs that are, you can pretty much guarantee that they're going to be present in this soil. It's not because it's cheap or bad soil, it's just that fungus and ant eggs, uh, they can really survive just about anything and they're present in pretty much any bag of soil that you can buy at the store. The only other thing that you'll 
need that you've already seen is uh, a toothpick um, or you can use tweezers now to transport uh, the seeds that are still movable I also like to use this part of a uh, nail nail clipper I just pop the seed in there and then I transport it over to the cup so that's basically what I am going to be doing I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit here there we go so we've got our <clears throat> oh and if you'd like to learn just the whole process of starting seeds in styrofoam cups I do have a video on starting seeds uh, indoors I'll go ahead and put a little link uh, right about there okay so just to give you an example of how we're going to do that um, I'm just gonna delicately pick the germinating seed up and um, move them on over into the soil and I do want to say this as well so it's kind of it's a little hard to see on this but one thing that you'll notice is that the uh, the thing the the sprout that's coming out that's the root you want to put that down at the bottom of the soil okay to where the seed portion is pointing up uh, basically just picture this sprout going straight down into the soil once it starts burrowing down then you're gonna see roots spreading out and uh, when those roots spread out they push the seed up out of the soil and uh, that's when it opens up and you start seeing leaves it's pretty neat stuff so I've got that I've got my soil right here and cross your fingers hey maybe it'll drop in and be just fine and uh, yes we've got the root at the at the bottom with the seed pointing up and with these guys um, the packet <clears throat> it says the planting depth an eighth of an inch uh, that's that's a that's about right right there you don't need to break out any rulers or anything like that um, th that'll be just fine and then you just cover this guy up just like that <laughs> once you've got the seed in the soil make sure the soil is watered uh, I'm gonna keep this guy um, in the same grow room just because the temperature is about the same um, and then I'm gonna cover it with like a plastic bag uh, over the top right there um, and like before I'm gonna check them twice a day to monitor when they break the surface of the soil um, and uh, with that uh, we're going to uh, the next part of this video um, is going to focus on uh, once they do start sprouting out of the soil actually there's one more thing that I would like to do before we kind of have a little time jump to when these start breaking out of the soil I want to show you how you can take out this other one right here you see that right there he's basically caught in or burrowed into the uh, the paper towel itself so all you do and you want to be kind of gentle with this just you don't want to damage the root itself it helps if the uh, paper is pretty damp and you can just start out by giving it a wide berth so that it separate it separates from the rest of the, the paper towel and now that we've got that there just tear it into smaller pieces again being very careful Woo, not to damage the root itself And there you have it. All you'd have to do at this point is plant it in the soil 
the side closest to my thumb down into the soil and cover it with soil uh, from, you know, cover it with uh, soil like I showed you uh, with the uh, previous one right here. And the next time we will see you, it will be uh, to show you exactly uh, once they've started sprout sprouting, um, what you would need to do to start providing them nourishment. It's been a couple of days. It's time to check on the seeds again. And uh, this is the uh, plastic bag that I had mentioned. Just put, I just put some sort of plastic bag over it just to kind of help hold the humidity and moisture in there and heat as well. It looks like we do have one guy that's sprouted so far. And just to give you an idea, um, these were put in the bags, the Ziploc bags as seeds, on the 14th of December. Um, this one was put in there in, in, in this cup, uh, you know, once it had started sprouting on December 18th. And uh, today is the 21st. So all in all, it's taken, what, seven days for it uh, to go from seed to seedling, which really is about as good as it gets. That's great. Um, now that they've sprouted, um, they are going to need some form of light to continue growing. Up to this point, um, the plant has received all the energy it needs from the material in the seed. So to prevent it from stretching and getting weak looking for light, we're going to place it under a CFL light about one to two inches away from it. Um, you can also use LEDs, but for the first few weeks, I prefer CFLs because seedlings seem to respond better with them. Give them about 18 hours of light every day and water when the top of the soil uh, looks dry. Oh, well, another, th another thing, um, if the temperature outside is gonna be 75 degrees or higher, you can just put these directly outside. Um, you don't need any special lighting, but it's still winter right here, uh, down here in South Texas, so I'll be keeping these guys inside for at least another month or two. But this is the light setup that I use. It's just a T12 light. Let me plug this guy in real quick. And I'm going to put it a little closer. I'm gonna raise it up. I'm gonna, I mean, I'm gonna lower this uh, T12 shop light so that it'll be one to two inches away at all times. You definitely wanna do that um, with your CFLs because otherwise, as I'd mentioned before, if you don't, if you put it more than one or two inches away, the plant, uh, the seedling is gonna start stretching. It'll get leggy and the base of the plant will be way too weak. This will ensure that uh, you have a strong, healthy, stocky, bushy plant and it just sets it up for success. And there you have it. In our next video, which will be in a couple of weeks, we're gonna talk about the fertilizing regimen you should be using as you're growing your seedlings indoors. We're also gonna to touch on some of the things that you should be doing to prepare your plants for taking them outdoors. I'm gonna cue up the music, but before I do, please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel if you'd like to receive future updates on new videos. Um, I'm also going to include a link to our Facebook group, Gardening for Beginners down in the description. Thank you very much and happy gardening. The things that you'll want to do to prepare them for taking them outdoors. Um, we're also God bless.